This seems this seems to be the best time of the year, spring football season, where you get a chance to sit down and break down exactly what each team has, what they've lost, uh, what we can possibly expect from them in the upcoming season. There's been a lot of different teams out there that have new coaches, as well as players that have left their previous football programs and moved on to go play somewhere else. So there's going to be a lot of different changes that we're going to see, especially in the SWAC this upcoming season. And uh, I want to go ahead and, and dive into a little bit and look at uh, an a institution in particular that um, they did some good things last season. I mean, they did have a coaching change. Uh, they did have some athletes that came into the program that we saw things uh, evolve, and, evolve and get better in some standpoints, you know, from, from a, a number standpoint, you get what I'm saying? And we're just going to go ahead and dive on in this thing and talk about exactly what they got going on and what we can possibly expect from them this upcoming season right after this. You know, it's your favorite coach back at it again. Ten toes down, I'm about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker, if you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in the free to two of them to come on in. It's not a positive vibe. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and dive on in this thing. Because we're like, Coach, wait a minute. This ain't... Blow the whistle with your host, Coach Walker. This, this is not an episode of that. Nah, guys, we're going we're gonna to shift it back a little bit. We're going to get back into the swing of things as far as everything that's going on. I did put one out um, yesterday in which I was talking about Coach Prime and uh, how he's about to turn the NFL upside down, especially when it comes to this, um, when it comes down to the NFL draft as far as how he's looking to manage uh, where some of his athletes going, i.e. Shiloh, Shador, and Travis Hunter. So that's going to be something very interesting to see what's going on. So I gave you a little bit of a backdrop on that. Make sure you go over there and check that out. Um, I'll go ahead and drop the card up here so that you can see it. And uh, like I said, go ahead and make sure y'all tune in, tap in, tell a friend of a friend about that. And y'all go check that show out. But guys, we're going to get into the Gravel State Tigers football program. Uh, I've been thinking about this young man that's over there at the program right now, The actually the starting quarterback. Phenomenal young man. He came over from Alabama State. Yeah. Ely was the one that recruited this young man into the program uh, to come in and compete for the starting quarterback position. And in his freshman year, he did, he had some time, but he didn't really get any time. Now, his sophomore year, he started getting a little bit more time. And then, um, what's that? I think the last year he left and he came over to Grambling State. So, looking at the maturation of this young man as far as how he's been, you know, improving year after year after year, I began to take a little, you know, take a little bit of a uh, look, see, to see exactly what this young man's got going on. Not only that, but I, I watched this young man from when he's playing Little League football all the way through to him playing ball now in college. I saw him in high school as well, as well as in college. And a young man definitely has the mechanics and has the ability to get out there on the field and lead a team in the manner in which uh, it needs to be for them to win. This young man is definitely a winner. He doesn't have a problem with doing the intangibles, things that, you know, sometimes quarterbacks or sometimes players may not want to do because you're asking me too much to, to get out here and do this when somebody else should do it. You know, you, you know how it go from time to time where you have folks feeling like, you know, that's not my responsibility. You know, so-and-so needs to do that. Why can't they do it? Well, being, a lead, being the leader that he is, he doesn't have a problem with doing things that need to be done. And I got it. I, like I said, I just want to give that young man his props as far as what, what can be expected from him this upcoming season. But before we get into that, before we get into that, I got to give the Gravity State Lady Tigers women's basketball team, I got to give them their flowers. Salute to them on their run in the WNIT. They lost last night to Louisiana Monroe, 102 to 76. I will say one thing for certain that the ladies had a rough time in that game in the first and the third quarters that kept them from, you know, trying to get, get a hold of that game and, and, and snatch that one to continue to keep moving forward. But I must say, Coach Simmons, the job that you've done with these young ladies this season 
cannot go without being spoken about. And I got to say salute to you. You have those young ladies playing on a high level right now. And I can only imagine where you're looking to take this program next season. Once everybody gets back in there, and you guys get together and get to get to moving this thing forward. I know the off season is going to take off in a minute as far as with getting the ladies back in the gym, getting them prepared, getting them, getting them mentally ready to get out there and compete this upcoming season in the fall. So definitely look forward to seeing you guys do some great things there. Salute to you guys again. What a phenomenal season that you had. So I definitely want to make sure I put that out there because you guys deserve it. But guys, we're going to jump back into this Grammar State football situation as far as trying to get an understanding exactly where they're going to go next. Now, I know folks, I know a lot of times, <clears throat> not I know, I understand many of you might not want to talk about like, oh, man, that's old news. We don't want to talk about that. And just thinking about it from this standpoint, you know, when they had the former head coach over there, Hugh Jackson, you, uh, he was relieved of his duties at the end of the season, especially after that debacle in the um, in the Bayou Classic, in which they had opportunity to win that game and fell short. But given, given him, you know, giving him a, a slight benefit as far as what he was able to do with Miles Crowley last season, and matter of fact, just the offense in general. And I was looking at some of the uh, athletes that no longer with the program, some that decided that they wanted to move on, jump to the transfer portal, as well as those that, you know, they no longer have any eligibility left. Now, a couple of players that did leave, you got Antonio Jones, wide receiver. You got both of your running backs, Chance Williams, as well as Floyd Chalk. Both of those young men are gone. You got your other running back, Dejan Richard, as well as four your offensive linemen, uh, Shanti Cole, Cody Hornsby, Melvin Priestley, and Jawan Singletary. All of those young men are gone from the program. And I begin to wonder exactly how do things play out next season for Miles Crowley as far as having an offensive lineman up there that's going to be able to protect him, especially when they, you know, they get to play in those teams that's going to send, you know, they, they, they're going to send the house at him. You know, like I said, just like myself and many others, they're sitting there, they're they're paying attention to what's going on at, at each institution, and they're already setting up game plans on how they want to move, especially once this last um once the last hurdle is cut, you know, once once the last door is closed when it comes to the transfer portal, trying to figure out exactly where athletes are gonna go, which program they're gonna play with, because there's still a lot of them that's out there in the transfer portal from that uh early cycle in the beginning of the year that have yet to be picked up. So we're going to see how that's going to go. But the uh, the transfer portal is going to open up again, I believe, on April 15th. So you're going to see a lot more athletes going to start piling in that bad boy, trying to find someone else to go play One ball. thing to keep in mind is this. Even though that spring football is here, you got the coaches there paying attention to what they have out there on the field, and they're going through, they're checking and say, okay, we need to go ahead and get this, we need that, we need this, we need that, so that they can have the necessary pieces out there for them to compete this upcoming season. Now, one thing I would say about Miles um, Crowley last season, he looked very comfortable with running the offense that he had. This is going to be a new offense that's going to come in. Uh, coach Dooley, the former head football coach over at Southern University, he's coming back to Grambling State to go ahead and put an offense together for Miles Crowley to run this upcoming season. And I definitely can see where uh, – Coach Dooley is going to have some wrinkles in there for Crowley to, you know, really showcase his talent with throwing the ball and being able to run a little RPO as well as, you know, if time to time, if a time or two you need to keep it tucking and run, he's going to do exactly that. I, I totally believe that Coach Dooley is going to look to take advantage of the strong suits of this young man as far as how his game is structured and just build off of that. So this is going to be something interesting to see exactly how this goes. Individual standpoint last season. Miles Crowley threw the ball 328 times, completing 197 for 2,003 yards, 16 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Now, that was last season. Now, Crowley was second in the swag. Out of all quarterbacks last season, he was second in the swag and passing behind Florida A.M.'s Jeremy Musa. So, this is going to, like I stated this year, is, is a lot of quarterback changes that's going on. You got Andrew Body that has left from Texas Southern. He's now over at Alabama State. You got Quincy Casey that was over at Alabama a and He's no longer there. I think he's uh, with um, uh, West Georgia. Uh, and then you got a couple other quarters. You got Jeremy Musa who's gone. He's no, he doesn't have any more eligibility left. You got uh, Trazon Conley. He's no longer with uh, so, not Southern Prairie View A&M. 
and you have the quarterback that's over at the quarterback that's over at uh, Alcorn State. I think it's Allen. He's no longer there as well. So that's those are going to be some key components to see how these quarterbacks are going to come back. Now, one quarterback in particular that you know I'm going to follow up on as well, outside of Crawley, is Sprague. That's down there at Bethune Cookman. He injured his hand early on in the season, so he didn't complete the season last year playing for Bethune Cookman. So we definitely going to follow up with him as well. But let's get back into this, Jay. Let's get back into this Miles Crowley uh, situation as far as exactly what this young man was able to accomplish last season. Grammar State will have a new head football coach. Mickey Joseph is coming into the program. Now, one thing I wanted, one thing that did catch my attention about Coach Joseph was his press conference, which he stated that he has an 85-15 ratio when it comes to recruiting athletes. 85% from high school, 15% from the transfer portal. Now, looking at some of the athletes that Grambling State did lose in the offseason, as well as those that no longer have any eligibility left for them to play with the program, I kind of felt that he should have increased that just a little bit. I would have said maybe 70-30 or 65-35, but hey, I'm not the head football coach. I'm just looking at the numbers as far as what I'm seeing is you know when it comes to the athletes that are no longer with the program. So that's why I'm sitting there and looking like, okay, what exactly can we expect from Grambling State next season? I mean, one thing for certain is this. When you lose both of your running backs, that was key to your offense. I mean, think about it. You had Chalk and Williams averaging 5.9 and 5.7 yards per carry. I mean, you're, when you're rushing the ball as a team, you're averaging, what, 4 point, was it 4.2, 4.3 yards per carry last season. So that is something, like I said, there, there's increases in the numbers. I was just looking at the numbers to get a, you know, get a feel of what exactly can we expect out of this offense as far as what, you know, what's no longer there, what is currently there, what can we expect. And what that would say is this, that running back room, we're going to see, we, we're going to find out real fast who's going to step into those shoes and be able to lead the Tigers rushing the ball next season because you lost three running backs. Chalk, Williams, and Richard. Look at those that no longer have any eligibility, and I, I could be all for some of these, but you had Talbert, uh, Derek Ta Diedrich Talbert, who was another running back on the team. He no longer has any eligibility left, so now that leaves you wondering exactly who's going to run the ball. I understand that uh, Coach did get a couple of freshmen that's coming into the program that you know very well could end up running the ball, or you could see some position changing where you're going to have folks out there, you know, trying to run that ball for the Tigers this upcoming season. So that's going to be something else for us to watch as well. But um, looking at, you know, not only the running backs, but they're taking a look at the offensive line, just trying to get it, get a feel of who's going to be up there blocking for Miles Crawley this upcoming season. And when you had four of the linemen that were in the rotation or were starters or the team last season that's no longer there, you had to take a look behind the cover to see, okay, how, what 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 do they have left that's going to come in there and be able to compete for the Tigers' this upcoming season? And looking at the depth that they did have in the uh, offensive alignment room, they will have uh, bodies that they can get out there and compete this upcoming uh, compete in the spring as well as compete this upcoming fall. Now, what they all say is this: when it came to those linemen that Coach Joseph was able to recruit, I mean he he's recruiting linemen as you know, on average, six foot three, three hundred plus. I mean, he, these are some big boys that they got coming out there on, on the field. So we're going to see exactly how all of this is going to work out. And nine times out of ten, we're probably going to see some of those young men get sprinkled into the offensive line to get out there and compete or spell out a uh, player or two here and there, through, you know, within games to get the, you know get them those reps within the game so that they can go ahead and compete at a high level. So this is something else that could be a very good benefit for the Grand State Tigers this upcoming season. They're definitely going to need to make sure that they keep their quarterback upright out there on the field and not let him get sacked, kind of like how things went was uh, the season. I think it was uh, 2022 season where sacks was just out of control and you had a bunch of turnovers. And, you know, like I said, all of the numbers on the offensive side of the ball was just down from rushing to passing and your, your uh, touchdowns and your interceptions were up. So we're just trying to make sure that, I'm, like I said, I'm just giving you guys the, the bits and pieces as far as things that's going on, what, what we're looking at here when it comes to 
the athlete that you have there. Like I said, you got a phenomenal leader out there on the field in Miles Crowley. Just looking to see exactly how this young man is going to pan out next season because, if I'm not mistaken, Crowley last season was a red shirt junior. So I'm not for certain if this is his last go round or if he has another season of eligibility left. This is going to be something great to watch because, like I stated before, this young man can throw that ball a ton. When they got when they played, uh, when he was at Alabama State, he played against UCLA. He drove the team down the field, and he was efficient as far as throwing the ball, throwing passes to the open receivers of the Hornets when he was playing for them at that time. And he really impressed some folks out there, you know, getting their eyes real wide open. Like, wait a minute, this young man, he can really get out here and spin this ball. They liked what he was able to do. So I'm just only imagining, I'm only imagining what this young man is going to be able to do this season if he has all of the right pieces around him over there with the Grammy State Tigers football program. Like I stated before, Coach Joseph is going to do it the way he wants to do it, how he feels fit of what's going on. I'm just hoping that this quarterback that they got right here, he could very well be that one that could possibly lead the SWAT in passing this upcoming season. Like I stated before, this is just the spring. Coach is just looking at, you know, looking underneath the hood to see exactly what we got going on here. This ain't no dig. This ain't no, 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 Shocks at nobody. I'm just looking at what these athletes are able to get out here and do. And right now, Gravity State, you know, could very well be moving in the right direction with what they're looking to accomplish. So we're going to sit back and relax. We're going to watch how everything plays out. And you know what? We just going to keep updating as things come up. Like I said, the spring game is right around the corner. Ooh, I can't wait to see how this going to go down. Y'all got me excited. That's why I'm talking about it now. But, guys, Coach going to go ahead. We're going to give you another one, which we're going to follow up on as far as uh, the different teams out there and, and, and what they got going on as far as uh, uh, how they're structuring those teams for this upcoming season for them to compete. So, guys, y'all make sure y'all tune in, tap in, tell a friend of a friend, and come on in. Your favorite coach is back at it again. But until next time, be the one in league.